All right, so what you should have just got done watching are the two videos that were highlighted in purple, the intro video and um, blind pole vaulter interview. Um, so we're going to take a couple of notes on that, and then we're going to do the one that's highlighted in blue together. So on page 13, you are going to um, go ahead and write quoted words, just like we did with the other three that we did the week before break. Okay, so quoted words. I'll zoom in on that for you. All right, so quoted words, um, and we're going to go ahead and put blindfold, or sorry, blindfold, blind pole vaulter, and then I'm going to talk about it. So go ahead and write that down, blind pole vaulter. I'll go ahead and write down interview, because interview is very important when we talk about quoted words. Okay, so blind pole Walter interview. All right, um, so this is kind of interesting to, first of all, I, I'm like, admire this girl who is doing this. I, I, I cannot do pole vaulting and I can see. Um, so I think that's pretty phenomenal. But the fact is, is that this story would not have been um, as, what's the word I'm trying to think of, um, as impactful if it didn't have all of the people that were cited. Um, or used in this. Um, and so the fact that they were able to talk to this girl and she was able to actually speak um, about her experience allowed this to have um, more of a impact story because we know that it's real. Um, we got to hear her side of it, the firsthand side of it. Um, but then you also had like the interviews from her parents, her coaches, um, and just having those people who are involved with the situation um, is really important to have. Um, and so when you see that, you wanna ask yourself, why was this person quoted? Well, she was quoted because it's all about her. She was, she's blind and she's a pole vaulter. Um, and so the parents were quoted because they deal directly with their child. And then um, coaches, same thing, all right? And so it added more to the story because it was a little bit more impactful and it allowed us as the viewers to stay interested in the topic, okay? All right, um, the next one is this, and I'm gonna pull it up on my screen. All right, so it says, scientists are using narwhals to understand sea level rise. Okay, so again, we're just kind of, we're talking about quoted words, so we're gonna kind of look through this. We're not gonna read the whole thing because you don't really necessarily have to read the whole thing um, unless you really want to afterwards. But um, we're looking for quoted words. Here's the first one I see. The narwhals like it says Josh Willis. Okay, so if you stop there, like, okay, Josh Willis. I I don't know who that is, but okay. Um, why is he um, quoted? Well, if you keep reading on after that, it kind of tells you why. So it says, said Josh Willis, the project lead for NASA's ocean Oceans Melting Greenland. Okay, so if we think about him being quoted and looking at what's going on, sea level rise, we're talking about oceans melting, um, so that kind of, they connect, so it adds more to the story, okay? So Josh Willis is a, bi a big guy in this, like he understands a lot of information. Um, that's why he's quoted. The next one, it says, narwhals are oceanographers, said it Kristen Laudre, I guess, I don't know how to say that, but again, we don't know who this person is, but after it, it says that she is a University of Washington marine biologist. So again, why is she quoted? She's a marine biologist. The whole thing is about narwhals, and narwhals are marine animals, okay? Um, so that's why they're quoted. So just understanding um, why they're quoted, because sometimes maybe Maybe if it just said by Kristen, whatever her last name is, and it didn't have this portion after it, then we don't really know why she was used um, to quote for this specific article, okay? So just kind of pay attention to that because that adds a lot of information for you. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and write this one down and that'll be our second one for quoted words. Uh, let's put, we'll just put Narwhal's article. Nar walls article let's we'll write that okay if you wanted to you could put like scientists quoted or something sorry i guess i could do that quoted 
are quotes from hodgepodge scientists. Because again, I think that's important to kind of put down there. That's really not very good handwriting. Sorry. If this is why I don't like writing in pen. Scientists. Okay. All right. So that is quoted words. Okay. All right. So then what you're going to do next from this video, um, this is where you got this video. We're going to go to slide five next. And your job again is to watch what is highlighted in purple. Um, so the intro video, so make sure you watch that. And then you're also going to make sure that you watch Dad Guesses Slain Tang, which is teen slang, um, which is actually a really kind of funny video. And I think you guys will enjoy that one. And then Baloney, it's a picture book. Um, but listen to that as well. But this is called Word Gaps. Word Gaps is really funny. This is my favorite one. Um, so it's unknown vocabulary words or phrases, often due to lack of background information or schema. Okay, so um, if we don't we don't know something. So I'm sure you guys use words that I don't use in replacing something else. And I, I don't know, like when you say it, I'm like, I don't know what that means. Um, and that's kind of something that you're going to see in the dad guesses teen slang, which is kind of fun. But when you notice words that you do not know, you need to stop. Because if you don't stop and you don't figure out what that word means, you're going to be clueless. Um, so it says, do, so it says, now ask yourself, do I know this word from someplace else? Um, does it seem like technical talk for this topic? Can I find clues in the sentence to help me understand the word? Or will any strategies from the big question number two help me understand? Um, big questions PDF. This is also on page six in your notebook. I'm going to show you in my notebook. All right, so on page six, I'm zooming out for you. It says this, um, it says... Big question number two. So here's number two. So what did the author think I already knew? Okay, so this is really important because authors write know, thinking that you already know some things. And maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Okay, so you want to ask yourself these questions. I did not know. I was confused by this. The author assumed that I knew this. The author thought I knew this. Um, those kinds of things. Um, so this is kind of a helpful document here. So and then it says, instead of I don't know, what could be the problem? Why do you not understand? So if you if you don't know, why do you not understand it? So here's the problems that we encounter as readers. Vocabulary, look for clues, look it up, use Google. I use that quite a bit actually. Visualizing, draw a picture. So as you're reading, maybe you need to draw a picture as to what's going on because then maybe that word will make sense with what you're drawing and what you're visualizing in your head. Prior knowledge, ask questions. So ask people, like ask around and learn about different words. And then you have that background knowledge. You have that prior knowledge. Sequence, causes, and relationships. Um, and then it says, now how do I clarify my, clarify my understanding? So once you find all of, like once you understand the vocabulary, put it back into what you were reading that you didn't understand. And then it should form a deeper understanding of what the whole thing is. Okay. Um, all right, so this one right here is kind of um, a funny example. I don't know if you guys have read this yet or not, so I'm going to kind of make this a little bit bigger. Um, so this is a mom to a daughter, I guess, or a son. I don't know. Um, this is not me to my mom. But it says, sorry, I'm going to get back to the page. It says, your great aunt just passed away, LOL. And a lot of us, we already know what that means. But it says, why is that funny? It's not funny, David. What do you mean? Mom. LOL means laughing out loud. Oh my goodness. I sent that to everyone. I thought it meant lots of love. I have to call everyone back. Um, so again, ma the mom did not know what LOL meant to a lot, most people, a lot of people. Um, I think there are some people out there that think it means lots of love. Um, but again, if you're, if you don't understand, you need to ask that question, like what is going on? I don't understand this. And that's what the kid ended up doing. Why is that funny? And, and explaining what it actually meant. Okay. All right. So, kind of a fun example. All right, so what you're going to do is you are going to listen to the videos that are highlighted in the purple. So you have the intro video, you have Dad Guesses Teen Slang, and then you have Baloney the Picture Book. And then after you get done doing those, you're going to go to slide six. And I will see you back on slide six so we can finish our notes on page 13. All right.